that has a list of uh, press clippings, such as this one, where you have a very short uh, uh, part of a news article, um, the, uh, uh, the website owner may end up needing a permission from the publisher who published uh, this uh, news article, even if uh, the extract is very short and as such is not protected by copyright. Uh, this also applies uh, to the sharing of links on social media. Um, uh, what is quite an, uh, a common um, feature of social media sites are these uh, so-called snippets where you post a, um, a, a, a link, a basic URL to a news article, and it creates this kind of preview where you have a, a thumbnail picture, the headline, and perhaps a small part of the article. Uh, these kinds of um, uh, links would have to also require a permission from the publisher, and not just in the case of newspaper articles, but also in the case of magazines or even blog articles, if it is a blog with multiple authors. Um, the third uh, activity that could be affected by it is uh, running online platforms, because uh, these new proposals require uh, platforms to take quite extensive steps to prevent copyright infringements by their users. Uh, the system that we have in place today under the e-commerce directive is that the platform operator is not liable for the copyright infringements of their users as long as they uh, take immediate action when they are informed about a copyright infringement and uh, take it down immediately. Uh, this would change and it would uh, affect quite a broad range of different platforms, such as uh, these kinds of portfolio sharing websites where people can upload pictures. Um, it could also affect um, platforms where people can simply post texts, like uh, comments, uh, or um, discussion websites such as Reddit. So it's a quite broad range of different online platforms that would be affected by this, and uh, they would uh, be met with quite onerous obligations. So uh, this would not just affect the users who are using these platforms on a daily basis, but of course also the companies operating them. Um, a fourth uh, activity that would be affected by this um, is uh, the use of copyright exceptions. So in general, any use of a copyrighted work requires a permission from the rights holders. But there are exceptions to this rule, such as the right to quotation, the exception for parody, or for educational purposes. And this is used quite extensively, for example, by uh, uh, new types of creators, such as YouTubers, who have been very outspoken in this discussion, who use uh, different types of copyrighted material, for example, for reviews of films, or of uh, video games where they do let's play videos and use relatively short parts of copyrighted material in order to criticize. And generally this is allowed under copyright law under the quotation exception or under exceptions for uh, um, news reporting. But uh, the, the issue with this new proposal is that because platforms are required to prevent copyright infringement from happening, they are most likely going to um, uh, remove more content than what is actually illegal. It's relatively difficult on a large scale to distinguish between a legal quotation from a film or from a, uh, a video game and a uh, actual copyright infringement. This is um, a, uh, a problem that already exists on a few platforms that use uh, so-called upload filters such as YouTube's content ID where users are sometimes uh, confronted with uh, wrongful removal of their content. But uh, at the moment, this is largely a voluntary activity, especially by large companies who uh, put in place such uh, activities. But under this proposal, these kinds of tools uh, to remove copyrighted material risk becoming mandatory and becoming extended to a much larger set of copyrighted material, whereas today they are mostly used in order to detect music alone. Um, now, it's relatively clear from the um, discussions in the European Parliament that the main target of this new proposal for platform responsibility is indeed YouTube. 
um, the, the demand for this star has been made mostly by uh, the music industry, but um, the fear is that actually a much broader range of platforms will be affected by it. So um, since the, uh, when the proposal was first made, it applies to any type of platform that has large amounts of copyrighted content, and that included purely non-commercial platforms such as Wikipedia, or actually university repositories where rights holders um, upload their own research articles. Since um, this proposal has been discussed, there has been quite a lot of pushback and protest from different user groups and communities, which has led to the addition of a few very specific exceptions to this rule. So generally, online platforms have to um, remove or, or prevent copyright infringement from happening in order to avoid liability. But uh, there are a few very specific exceptions, namely for Wikipedia. So online encyclopedia are, are excluded from this obligation. There is a specific exception for eBay. There's a specific exception for GitHub, and hopefully there is going to be a specific uh, exception for educational platforms. But the problem with this approach is, of course, that uh, the legislators have only excluded those platforms where the communities have been very loud, where they had a lot of lobbyists in Brussels, and where they have been able to convince people that this broad legislation doesn't work. But it will affect all the platforms that don't exist yet today, where nobody thought that they needed an exception. And it also will affect uh, a lot of platforms that were simply not considered in this legislation. So to give you a few examples of platforms that will be affected, where it's perhaps um, disproportionate, this could include uh, blogging platforms such as WordPress, dating platforms like Tinder, um, even creative platforms that are trying to raise money for authors like Kickstarter or Patreon and even things like TripAdvisor where it's not really, uh, there is no big copyright infringement problem but nevertheless they would be uh, met with these obligations. So the fear is that there will be a lot of collateral damage on websites that don't really have a big copyright infringement in the first place. Um, so why is this uh, happening? Um, the, the main problem is exactly this, this proposal on upload filters. So there are uh, a few nuances between the parliament position and the council position that I will explain in detail. But in effect, both of these proposals lead to an obligation to prevent copyright infringement from happening. And um, upload filters in practice uh, create quite a lot of problems because copyright law is a complex uh, piece of legislation. There are very uh, difficult questions involved about, for example, what is a copyright protected work in the first place, which requires a distinction based on the originality of the work. And also, um, because copyright law is limited in time, a copyright protected work is uh, protected 70 years after the death of the author. So a lot of information is required in order to decide whether something is a copyright infringement or not. And generally, these automatic upload filters have a difficult time making these distinctions. Now, if you look at content ID, this is a relatively simple upload filter, even though it uh, took uh, uh, millions of dollars to develop, it is specialized in detecting music, which is one type of copyrighted content. But these upload filters would have to detect a quite broader range of copyrighted material, including text, um, uh, a text being read out by a person in an audio recording, uh, a picture of a sculpture or a building in the background of a picture. So uh, quite a broad range of, of different uh, subjects. And uh, the main complaint from the side of internet users is uh, that this is a proposal that um, is coming exactly from this use case of the music industry where uh, uh, upload filters are already relatively common, but um, that it uh, is implemented as a general rule applied to all copyrighted material. And uh, there is a fear that at the end of the day, the music industry will not even benefit from this proposal because their main uh, concern or their main hope with this law 
is that uh, the obligation on, of, on uh, YouTube to be liable for copyrighted material will lead to an increased payment of uh, copyright royalties. Because in most countries, YouTube already today actually does have a license agreement with uh, the music industry. But um, generally, the music industry feels that YouTube is not paying enough um, and is not respecting the, the uh, possibility for rights holders to negotiate collectively through collecting societies, but rather it is offering people a take it or leave it deal. Either you get the advertising revenue or you get nothing at all. So um, if we introduce a law that basically says you are liable for copyright infringement unless you, lose, uh, you use upload filters, it's actually YouTube that will be the only company that doesn't have to change anything because this is already what they do. Um, so uh, the fear is that this proposal might actually backfire in the sense that it would uh, um, more or less gold plate uh, YouTube's current <coughs> business activity and uh, make it clear in law that what YouTube is doing is actually illegal because they are using a filter, they are not liable, but all the other smaller platforms that do not have the uh, development capacity to build such filters would either have to buy them from large competitors or uh, they might be uh, even forced to shut down. Um, at the same time, of course, the filters that already exist make quite a lot of mistakes. Um, these are not just mistakes uh, that um, are uh, based on um, copyright uh, exceptions. So this is the common thing that you see on YouTube that, for example, uh, a quotation is not recognized or a work that is in the public domain um, is considered an infringement. Actually, a German music professor made an experiment quite recently where he uploaded a, uh, a piece of uh, classical music that was clearly in the public domain from Bach, from Puccini, so really uh, composers that have been dead for a long time and he uploaded his own recordings of those and they were immediately blocked by Content ID uh, as infringing the copyright of Sony Music. Now, uh, why is this? It's because Sony Music is of course selling CDs and recordings of the same classical music and the performances are protected by copyright or by neighboring rights. And these filters um, they, are, they have become more sophisticated, so they don't just check whether a, a, a file is 100% the same, they actually try to analyze what's in the file and uh, use artificial intelligence to try to guess whether something is a copyright infringement or not. Now, if you have two uh, performances of the same piece of music, they are not identical, but they sound very similar. And unfortunately, these filters are smart enough to think that this is somebody trying to cheat the filter, when actually they are taking down something that is perfectly legal. 